something that is reoccurring but is transformed throughout the course of a composition. Boom! If anyone that we have been following has been transformed throughout a composition, oh my gosh. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your favorite Cuban German. Welcome back to the Ultimate World Music Reaction Channel. It's me, Rosalie. I'm so glad you're here. Are you ready? We are getting into something really, really special today and I'm excited, I'm ready. Bleach stains on my pants and all. I can't wait to check out NF Motto. Are you ready? Here we go. What's up everybody? Welcome back. Welcome to the Ultimate World Music Reaction Channel. My name is Rosalie. I'm a singer-songwriter. I have a master's in counseling psychology and over here on this channel we are all about exploring music, artists, genres from all around the world, diving into the psychology of the music, of the lyrics. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so we can grow together. I'm really excited about this one. So, NF has dropped a new song called Motto, and I can't wait to check it out. I have been on this NF journey. I have a bunch of NF reactions out. Check that out in my America playlist. As I'm learning, it's phenomenal to me to see the different cadences, the different bars he brings, and in on top of that, doing all of it in his own unique way. But I feel like NF is unique in that he is very talented as a rapper, but his, his songwriting and his lyrical skills are really great. And I think something that's really special to many of us is that he is real. He keeps it clean. He keeps it profound. I haven't heard one single song where I'm like, what, what's the point of this? And I love the fact that he hasn't bought into the music industry. Most of the songs have had me in tears. It's been my own little therapy. Most of them have been really heavy. It's been interesting to see him having a lot of these, the dark black, dark gray, clothing on right we know him with his cap we know that he's all about real music and so there's been these things that have been characteristic to nf nathan feuerstein is his name uh, feuerstein and it's interesting to see how he has been growing and i said this in my reaction to hope when you grow as an artist and you're, and you're putting out there your journey of healing for everyone to follow it's takes courage in my opinion to continue doing that to continue being vulnerable and real because if people start associating you with suffering or pain they might want you to stay in that place because you're relatable to that part of their life and so when the artist grows and moves through that I think it takes emotional intelligence on our parts as the listeners and the fans to go hey let's grow with them let's learn from this let's let this be our inspiration that his journey musically has been a beautiful display of that the word motto, before I dive into this song, I don't even know what it's about. We, I saw the little clip with his feet up on the, um, on the chair, surrounded by a bunch of people that looked like they were in a, a black tie event, fancy, dressed up, and he's sitting there with his hoodie and his, his just chill clothing. Interesting to note that as in hope, he's now wearing white. So there's been this transition from a lot of the dark clothing, that more depressed, dark, sad vibe, to more light. The word motto is um, basically a short sentence, you know what it means, a short phrase that encapsulates, summarizes someone's belief or ideas. Then also in music, however, a reoccurring theme in musical work. And we know that that's NF specialty. He's been all about reoccurring themes and these little nuggets, the red thread. Now, when we look at the etymology, y'all know we're all about music and psychology. I like to go deep. It's from the Italian motto, late 16th century, and uh, it comes from the Italian word. An example of motto in music, that reoccurring theme that is sometimes transformed throughout the composition. Oh my gosh, y'all. When we look at what motto in music means, and as I just mentioned, it's this theme that's reoccurring, sometimes it is transformed throughout the course of a composition. For example, Beethoven's fifth and Tchaikovsky's fourth and fifth symphony. Something that is reoccurring but is transformed throughout the course of a composition. Boom! If anyone that we have been following has been transformed throughout a composition. Oh my gosh. Not only is he a masterpiece that is being transformed because he's doing the hard work of healing and growing, but he is doing that transforming in his own masterpieces, his musical work. Oh snap, I'm gonna stop. I, I, well, let's, let's just dive in. All right, make sure to subscribe. Here we go. Let's see. I could write a record full of radio songs Do a bunch of features that my label would love Do a bunch of features that I don't even like Just to build up the hype Yeah I could sell my house and move out to LA Get inside of rooms with the biggest of names Hire 50 people just to give me advice On the way I should write 
Oh God. Yeah. Sounds like a nightmare if you ask me. Yeah. Went from my bedroom to the big leagues. You know how many times that I was told things wouldn't work but worked out. Having cold feet didn't keep me from success but delayed it some. I used to be the guy who killed to get a number one. I had to hear that song's a hit before I thought it was. But nowadays, I don't really give a what? Oh God. Yeah. Might catch me in the award show. Eating popcorn in the back. Okay, stop. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's my motto. So many things right now. He was running circles around that VIP star on the red carpet, okay? Popping up in here, white car surrounded by all these black fancy rides, okay? That's already kind of cool because he's wearing the white, beige, cream colored uh, jumpsuit, whatever. And so that's already a fitting contrast. Cause like I said earlier, we went from a lot of the dark clothing t-shirt to now that lighter vibe for his new album, hope, or at least hope and now motto that we are seeing so far. Now we're seeing him right up in there with the car, push down that sign, like almost like kicking the door, kicking the door down, right? Like you can tell when someone's just showing up and they don't give a what also really cool because he's just constantly true to not cussing. I really respect that. And a lot of what he's saying right now, for me at least from the get-go, is just a reference to the music industry. How he didn't give into it, how it maybe may have taken longer, but he's getting there. I think in his song, When I Grow Up, there's this part that talks about, I'm dedicated, the de definition of dedication. Wrote this whole record while I was levitating, sitting in my room with the pen and paper, I'm innovative. Okay, so in his various songs, you can see he started from the bottom. All these paparazzi camera people shooing him out of the way, like they don't want him there. Him not fitting in at all, intentionally just rebelling, running circles around that guy. That was witty. Uh, let me go back a bit. Some. I had to hear that song's a hit before I thought it was, but nowadays I don't really give a what? Oh God, yeah. might catch me at the award show, eating popcorn in the back row, catching Z's with my hat low, no nominations but it's cool though, oh God, you might see me in the same clothes, I had on last week in my shame no, yeah, you heard this saying if it ain't bro. Did he just say no? No, no. Did he just say, I had them on, like, um, you know, his clothes, I had them on last week. I'm not ashamed, though. Is he referring to the fact that last week when he released Hope, he was wearing the same clothes? You've got to be kidding me. How can you be so genius to be making all these little connections? Oh, snap. I'm <laughs> Let me go back again. Oh, God. You might see me in the same clothes I had on last week in my shame, no yeah. You heard this saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, that's my motto Yeah I miss buying CDs at the store and thumbing through the cases trying to make a choice. Yeah. That don't make no sense to you, well of course. See, one man's inconvenience is another's joy. Wow, wow, how are you unemployed? Telling me to get a life, you should look at yours. Yup, congratulations, you can raise your voice. Hope you break both of your legs falling off your horse. Oh snap, this is the industry. This is my homeboy. Oh snap. If that's not my type of thing, if that's not how I talk, oh man, this is like a, my brother from another mother, I'm telling you. Where it ain't how big you are, it's how big you seem. Where people sacrifice the art trying to chase a dream, and they wonder why they music's lacking creativity. Oh yeah. Would it gave anything to be respected by the artists I was listening to? But not no more, them days of history. Skip the red carpet, you looking for me? Oh God. Catch me at the award show Eating popcorn in the back row Catching Z's with my hat low No nominations but it's cool though Oh God You might see me in the same clothes I had on last week in my shame no yeah. You heard this saying if it ain't bro Don't fix it, that's my motto Got my feet propped up Leave my shirts untucked I'm the boss, so what? I do what I want! Oh God. You 
you got the trophy, that's great. I'm happy for you, no hey. Still got a smile on my face. Chilling in the back like, hey! Oh God! Yeah, you might catch me in the award show. Eating popcorn in the back row. Catching Z's with my hat low. No nominations, but it's cool though. This is crazy. 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 There's so many flipping things right now. So that guy, let me start from the back. Actually, let me start from the front. I don't even know where to start. Before I forget though, that guy sipping his um <laughs> sipping his drink, wearing that dark, you know, gray, black t-shirt shorts. I don't know, man. On one hand, I'm feeling like this could look like some kind of unhealthy version of NF if he had like, like let himself go and he had stayed in that place of not getting healing, not getting therapy, succumbing to the pressure of the music industry, trying to be somebody he's not, not dealing with his issues, not going to therapy session. That's kind of where my mind went for a second. Coming out of this award show, you know, this, but at the same time, it's kind of also humorous because it's this kid could be a fan. Maybe I'm missing a reference here, but there was a whole bunch. I'm going to look at the lyrics in a second. A couple of things. The fact that the award, uh, that sign on the door for the award show or the award itself said happy is already really powerful. Because if we look at some of his work and a lot of the focus it was on, it was really dealing with hard and heavy and not very happy. So the fact that it says happy and that there's this big emphasis on joy here, the whole beat. la da 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 but da 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 like it's really it's upbeat it, these major chords this upbeat super good hook he's really good at that these beats his it's amazing i believe you all have told me he works a lot with tommy prophet who i have to explore more as well so these music videos this the compositions is so well thought out but these upbeat this upbeat feeling that is created through those major notes, the fantastic hook that makes it so catchy and memorable creates a very hopeful and a very joyful vibe. It's upbeat. It's not heavy. It's lighthearted. Him clowning around, making this funny face, is smiling. But his smile at one point, even when he was being dragged out, he was being so right here, even when he was being dragged out, um, uh, from the award show and they're all like go leave or whatever they were saying and he's like right like totally I don't give a what the, but not from an arrogant place you know when we stop caring what people say we stand up for what we believe and we break free from some of that we can it depends on the why okay not everybody that says oh I'm strong and independent I don't care what the world says is coming from a place of true healing some people do that and this Fake confidence is actually arrogance that is masking a whole lot of insecurities or there's a lot of external things we do to appear a certain way. And he even talked about that, how things seem, right? Where you get rich, you get famous off of not how who you are or what you're doing, what you're doing, but how things seem. And so a lot of it is a focus on facade and outer appearance, right? I mean, we live in that world where we know that's what it's about. You can't trust the news and the media. You see commercials and it's all about external. You do not see a whole lot of commercials that are high level, big, big, big money, big money commercials that are talking about getting healing, growing, being moral, seeking uh, faith, um, building your family, right? Like loyalty, fidelity, like the big stuff is all consumeristic. And so when people come to a place of confidence of like, yeah, what up? I don't give a what. That's not always from a place of true confidence. That could be fear. That could be a mask for actual fear of rejection. But when you've been doing the hard work to heal and you get to a place where you can genuinely with joy say, 
all right, I don't care. Like, y'all can say whatever you want. And he's being dragged out. Joyous as I'll get out. To me, it's a much more wholesome place. And that to me is true confidence. It's true healing from people pleasing. True healing from feelings of abandonment, which we see were great in songs like How Could You Leave Us, right? This deep, deep, deep hurt rooted in what's wrong with me. And I know many of you guys can relate to that. Many of us can relate to that. This fear of What's wrong with me that those who I need the most, that those who I was supposed to be able to trust the most left me, abandoned me, chose addiction over me. And there's a deep, deep pain that comes from that that takes hard work, healing behind closed doors, behind the doors of that mansion where we dig deep, where we get that shovel, where we dig deep. See what I'm saying? And we bury the fear, we bury the pain, and we learn to forgive to a place where now like in hope we can say, I forgive you. I'm not going to do the same things. I'm going to do better for my kids, but I forgive you, mom. Ooh. And so this deep healing, this deep pain, this is not surface level what it seems, growth. These therapy sessions he's been going through are profound. So to the point then that he can have this joyful smile while he's being dragged on the floor on this orange red, on the red carpet, the joy he has in his face at that point is so pure. It is so, to me, so childlike and like it's genuine. Very, very different than that black painted on smile we see in, what was it, Nate? Then those references like, oh God, reminds me of, makes me think of his song, Oh Lord, that I haven't listened to yet, but the title is Oh Lord, so that's kind of neat. Like I already said, that white car surrounded by the black cars, that contrast between dark and light, day and night, pain and healing, right? The change in him. Again, that word motto being a slogan that summarizes your beliefs and in this case him saying his motto is don't fix it if it ain't broke wonder where that comes from we know that motto it's an american expression this idea of if it's not broken you don't need to fix it if something is working if it's reasonably successful if it's effective if it if it works there's no need to change it one of the people it's attributed to widely attributed to is a gentleman named thomas bertram lance the director of the office of management and budget during Jimmy Carter's presidency. He resigned after his first year in office due to charges in a banking scandal. Um, he was later acquitted of that in 1980. You never know, though. You know, a lot of these things, there's nothing new under the sun. Could have been something that, you know, the Egyptians were saying to one another or, you know, the uh, ancient Canaanites, you know, the Abrahamic tribes and, you know, they just didn't write it down. But it's attributed largely to this guy. But we know the expression, okay? And uh, I think just personally, subjectively speaking, there's a lot of validity to that, right? If something's not broken, why fix it? But psychologically, it's also interesting to take that apart for a second, just the motto itself, not even musically speaking, because when we are talking about humans, when we're talking about healing, a lot of us are hurting. I don't think it would be correct to say we're broken, right? You're not broken if you're hurting. You might be hurting and you might be in need of healing, but you're not broken. You're not you're not less than. I think the idea, at least in Western society, of something that is broken is often associated with loss of value, right? Something is abused, something is broken, it's secondhand now. And um, it's interesting because in our culture, now that it has been, that it has lost value, we don't esteem it to the same degree that we would the fancy jewels, the high-end products. I think that's one of the reasons why it's such a lonely place when people are hurting and dealing with deep pain because when you feel like you've been used and you feel like you cannot undo what has been done to you or what you have done so there's this underlying feeling of shame and there's this un to me an underlying feeling of existential fears because you can't ever undo it and when you come face to face with something you cannot undo maybe you can restore it right you can refurbish you can renovate things you can fix or upper them and you can try to do that with relationships, but it's never exactly going to be the same. And I could see that triggering existential fears in many, a reminder, a brutal reminder of our mortality, of our humanity, and of how finite we are, how it can ever return to its original state. There's this devastation, I feel, and this loneliness that comes with that, this idea of I'm broken, I'm damaged. Even though I would say to you, if you feel that way, you are not broken. You're hurting. You can heal. We are ever changing and evolving and we are allowed to become who we are. And I think it's so important to remember that we can keep moving forward.
in, J- in Japan, there's something called the kintsugi, which is the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery. And so if a bowl, for example, a pottery bowl is broken, instead of just throwing it away or buying a new one, the fragments are being put back together with a glue-like tree sap, and the cracks are adorned with gold. So instead of trying to hide the damage, it's highlighted, it's beautified. And I think there's something beautiful about that when it comes to healing and to the human psychology. Not that we glorify pain, right? That's the other extreme where I, people become so stuck in their suffering and what has been done to them that now that becomes a new identity and they can't break free from it. And they're so stuck that they can't reach a place of such joy like we see here with NF. That's one extreme. But the other side of that is that we don't have to hide our hurt. We can use it as part of our story. NF doesn't shy away from referencing the past. All around his videos, all through his lyrical art here, you can see these references. He's not acting like it never happened. He's not pretending like he never wrote Nate and Mansion and Therapy Session and Wake Up and all these different things. But he references it and he keeps moving forward. And I think that's something beautiful for all of us to remember is that's all we can do. Time is an illusion. The past is a concept that we've construed in our minds to grasp existence. But we're always actually just present. Even if we could jump into the future, we'd be back to being present in that moment. If you could travel back in time, you'd be back to being present in the present. So it's, it's really phenomenal to, to ponder that for a little bit. All you have is here and now. And what you can do is highlight your scars, the cracks of your life. Allow gold, allow healing that sap, that balm to fill the cracks for it to become this beautiful new masterpiece that tells a story that can bring other people hope, bowls that can feed other people. I'm using as a metaphor, cups that can give water to those who are thirsty, where your life story can become a a testament of what's possible. And I think NF is demonstrating that beautifully with his music. The lyrics real quick. I could write a record full of radio songs, do a bunch of features that my label would love, do a bunch of features that I don't even like just to build up the hype. I could sell my house and move out to LA, get inside of rooms with the biggest of names, hear 50 people just to give me advice on the way I should write. I feel like there's references to this pressure from the music industry and the fans and the world around him in therapy session. We see it even just recently in Hope. But I love the fact that this was, yeah, just a statement to say I could do all these things I'm aware of my possibilities sounds like a nightmare if you ask me went from my bedroom to the big leagues you know how many times that I was told things even that reference to the big leagues there's something in me that makes me think of intro one of the intros oh god might catch me at the awards show eating popcorn in the back row catching z's with my head low which is also neat because I feel like he does that quite a bit when he like chills back pulled his cap down No nominations, but it's cool though. You might see me in the same clothes I had on last week. Am I ashamed? No. And again, like I said earlier, that clothing reference there. You heard the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's my motto. I miss buying CDs at the store, thumbing through the cases, trying to make a choice. To me, that's a little bit of a throwback to just how the music industry used to work. Don't make no sense to you? Well, of course. See, one man's inconvenience is another's joy. That's very interesting. And that is true. Some things that are inconvenient to one are a joy to another, right? We experience that all the, all the time, especially in the Western world where we get so used to certain luxuries, certain wants that we think are needs that are truly not, that to another would be complete joy. Congratulations. You can raise your voice. Hope you break both of your legs falling off your horse. Hope you break. Even funny that he's using words like hope up in here. You know how people, they wish you um, luck when they say go break a leg. I was told, I think my husband told me that that's, uh, I don't know if he, I don't remember if he made that up now or if he read that somewhere, but they say that, you know, oh, go break a leg in the hopes that you get cast. Ha 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 ha. You know, like as in when you're like going to a casting or an audition, but it's so another motto, another idiom of wishing someone luck. So to say, I hope you break both of your legs falling off your horse is a really interesting double play here on both that idea of break a leg, but also pride comes before the fall. Oh, snap. This is the industry where it ain't how big you are. It's how big you seem right? All about facade, where people sacrifice the art trying to chase a dream. Then they wonder why the music's lacking creativity. Oh man, I love the fact he's just calling it out. Would have gave anything to be respected by the artist I was listening to, but not, I like that too, how he split that up and then the two fell on the next um, 
cadence and the next rhythm, but not no more. Them days are history. Skip the red carpet. You looking for me? Got my feet propped up. Leave my shirts untucked. I'm the boss. So what? I do what I want. Again, this confidence, this joyful, just I'm not going to be held back. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to be persuaded, per pressured and ridiculed by the music industry, running circles around the guy, playing that um, catch. Um, what's the word for that? Taking the microphone from the journalist interviewer, paparazzi, whatever, and just constantly snatching it back from her, messing with her. So playful, so joyous. You got the trophy. That's great. I'm happy for you. No hate. Still got a smile on my face, chilling in the back like, hey, I'm telling you, man, this is my brother. Ayo. Snap, like all these words, this just totally, that reference with that kid in the end, I don't know. It's funny, it was very humorous, this guy just, and then another way to interpret that, not necessarily an unhealthy version of himself back in his back, black, dark clothing, it could just be, you know, another person just like him, real people, he's all about real music, right, maybe just another real person in their just regular t-shirt, not all dolled up, outside of this fancy award show, outside of this building filled with all these black tie, fancy people, that are very out of touch with the real world. And here's a real person on the streets, sipping that drink, wearing their casual clothing, watching him and what he's doing, you know, waving all awkwardly. Like, I'm not exactly sure what all is meant by this, but that's my interpretation. I love this. And I did it again. He did it again. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. As always, make sure to subscribe so we can keep growing. Lots more coming. And I will see you on the next ride. Ayo! Hey